Hi, welcome to Market in a Minute. So I have an investment philosophy that I describe as being loss averse. Doesn't mean I'm risk adverse. It's just, I don't like having losses. So when we see things that are obvious or when the technicals start to deteriorate, I like to become more defensive. So we're entering uh, the month of September. The month of September tends to be a horrible month for the overall markets. And right now things are not set up very well in terms of the market being you know, very overbought, valuations being high. We got a big number this week in NVIDIA and even a bigger number next week with the employment numbers. So our outlook on the overall market, I wanna start with talking about NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is a big company. It is, the market cap is second only behind uh, Apple at, at 3.2 trillion in size. Apple's at 3.5 trillion in size. Those market caps are mind boggling, right? They're, they're huge. So the volatility on NVIDIA when they report is roughly up or down 10%. That's what the market's saying. So that equates to about 70 basis points or 0.7% movement in the markets, either positive or negative. So it could have a pretty big impact on, on Wednesday after the close when they report. We're looking at the numbers. So the current expectation is close to $29 billion in revenues to be reported and 65 cents in earnings. Last quarter, they reported 26 billion and 60 cents in earnings. So the last four quarters, NVIDIA has, has beaten the midpoint of the range by roughly $2 billion. And over the last four quarters, they've, they've averaged about $4.5 billion in growth versus the previous quarter. So the last two quarters, they've been seeing about $4 billion and, and growth of the last two quarters versus the previous quarter sequentially. So what that means is basically you add uh, 4 billion to the 26 billion, um, it should report somewhere around 30 billion in revenues. It surprised me if the street's not already thinking that, could be a touch higher, but they don't come in at around 30 billion or more and give a good outlook about the, this delayed Blackwell chip. There's no big issue uh, that'll occur in the, in the coming quarters because of not having that chip as expected. So if there's no big issues in it, maybe the stock will hold in there reasonably well. The valuation is currently 27 times the current run rate of revenues, 27 times the current run rate of, of revenues. There's a revenues, not earnings, 27 times. So Microsoft has a, has a revenue uh, valuation of about 11 times. So you can see the major uh, valuation issue between the third largest market cap company and the second largest market cap company. Microsoft has the, the benefit of having a, a, this enormous amount of reoccurring revenue. And NVIDIA, they need to scramble every quarter to make those, those revenues. And some point in time, that's going to become an issue. So this is not something that those revenues are built into. So looking at the chart, um, you know, using our technical model, we did get a buy here in, uh, in early May as it crossed the 50-day. And then when it broke down below the 50-day here in uh, July, we got a sell signal. And then it turned back up to a buy signal as it crossed the 100-day. Um, in, in August. So right now it is um, above the 50 day and close to its old high. We think the stock needs to break above that old high and or if it goes down uh, the first day or, or, or afterwards, but it has to hold that 50 day moving average at around $121. Otherwise we see it pulling back uh, further from that point. So again, Nvidia, major report coming on Wednesday. If you do the math, it, they should have a pretty good report. However, this will be the sixth quarter in a row of probably better than expected earnings. And by the sixth quarter, generally, that's when the analysts really start to figure things out. We think we figured this out. We think it should be around 30 billion in revenues. If it's less than that, I think the stock's gonna get hit uh, 
very hard. Okay, looking at the MAG7 in total. All right, so this is a big issue for the markets as technology is roughly 42% of the overall S&P 500. Um, you can see the slowing growth rate of both earnings and, and revenues. So big growth in the first quarter of this year in terms of earnings and revenue growth only at 14% for the MAG7. Um, this quarter looks like it's close to 30% with about the same in terms of revenue. And it really slows down as we go into next year. We think next year will be somewhere around a 20% earnings growth rate and something less than that, you know, probably close to or less than what we're currently seeing in terms of the revenue growth. So what's happening is that that growth rate slowing down, that money's going to get reallocated to the rest of the overall markets. So at 42% of the S&P 500, we think that's too much of a weighting in technology. The valuations are too high. We think it should be more around 32% of the S&P 500. So that's a 24% hit on a relative basis that we see happening over time, likely to occur on the next bull run as other parts of the market really pick up, and in particular, the small cap, uh, small cap stocks. So everybody knows this at this point, it's in the markets. The Federal Reserve is gonna either cut rates by 25 basis points, or it's gonna be 50 on September 18th. And we think it's gonna be 25, but the employment report has to be reasonably good. If it's a weak employment report, they may do 50, and the market's not gonna like 50. So if they're cutting because they have to cut, the market's not gonna like that. If they're cutting because inflation's moderating, but the growth is not, that's bullish. However, we think that it's already roughly in the markets at this point. So what happens when the Fed starts cutting interest rates? So we get this from uh, re this research from Wells Fargo. On average, when the Fed starts to cut interest rates, the market drops about 20%. Yeah, that's not good news. Kind of surprises everybody a bit. 20% drop in the overall markets over the next 250 days following the first uh, interest rate cut. Now, the BOS, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, really blew it in a big way. We saw a drop in employment uh, from what they expected of about 818,000. So that's a big drop, 818,000. Um, decreased from what they expected. A lot of people invested around these numbers that were uh, that were expected to be strong, or they thought they were strong, and they turned out to be just total BS. So you know we didn't think these numbers were really uh, truly what they what they were being reported. We think we thought they were too high. Um, a number of other people thought they were too high. It just wasn't looking like it was matching the economic growth we were seeing. So, you know, this was somewhat of a scam by the BLS, in our, our opinion. They were so far off, um, it really does a disservice to the people that were investing off of those numbers. So the employment report, obviously, it's going to be big on September 6th. Um, the last report was about 4.3% in unemployment that was reported. We think if it's not a good number, it's going to be a problem for the overall markets. Seasonality. So... Uh, September, a really tough month seasonally, and the fundamentals are, are shaping up that um, the bias is to the downside. Uh, the last four Septembers, the, uh, the average pullback has been 7%. The high's been 9 and the low's been roughly 4.2. So from the start of September to the bottom of September, roughly average about 7%. So you can look at 2023, 6.4% drop to, to that bottom in September. Uh, 2022, actually about 9% drop from uh, the beginning to the, the bottom in September. September 2021, 4.2% drop. And then September 2020, 8.3%. So those are tough numbers. You know, if you just take that into account itself, you want to be defensive, but you also have the valuation issue and being overbought. You got big geopolitical uh, risk as well. So the valuations, looking at that quickly, 
So we're roughly at 22 and a half times forward 12 month earnings. So the high of, of the valuation uh, was back in 2000 when the valuations were 25 times earnings. If you look back here, here's 18 times. This is over a 10 year period. So 18 times earnings, uh, that's about a 20% drop from where it is currently. So keep in mind that there's COVID distortion in the PEs over that 10 year period. If you pull the distortion out, you're even lower. You're at 16 to 17 times earnings is where the real 10, 10 year average is. So near term, we got NVIDIA concerns. We um, could be good, could be bad. We think it's, it's in the stock, clearly. This is such an overrun stock. Um, we don't see it going up a whole heck of a lot more from here. Uh, but, you know, it's a big report and the market's really going to focus on that. We think the market should be focused more on the, on the report, the employment report on September 6th. So that one could be bad news either way. If the employment report is too strong, then the Fed might take the, the rate cuts off the table or go slower than expected. If it's too weak, then the market's going to panic and the Fed's going to have to move a little quicker. So we have an overbought market. Valuations are high. We're back to the old highs. Um, seasonally a tough period. Tons of geopolitical risk and not to mention the inflation risk as well. So we see a lot of, a lot of risk in the U.S. elections as well. There's a lot of uncertainty and depends on who wins, whose policies are better. I just, I tell you, Harris's policies are bizarre. They, they, don't, they don't make any sense. It's not something that they could possibly be put through anyway. But, uh, you know, the market might panic over that a little bit. So strategy, what to do? We're being defensive. So we pulled back a week or so ago pretty significantly on our overall exposures to the market as we got to that overbought condition. Um, we like the income stocks. We think they're set up really well. And we've got a number. You know, we've really been doing a lot of work on, on that side of the market. We have a lot of really good income stocks we like a lot. We think we can get at least at a minimum of 10% yield on, on the income side. The blue chip stocks, um, you know, I love that there's activists in these stocks. They provide a pop. So as you know, we've been doing that a little bit, buying before the activists is being reported and just being lucky about it. But also you look at like uh, Macy's this past week. We, we bought on the report. The stock sold off on the report. We actually had a pretty darn good earnings report, um, better than expected, but they gave kind of a, a, a cautious outlook on the consumer. That stock pulled back in a major way on that, on that earnings report. Just keep in mind, there's an outfit that wants to buy this, the company at roughly 50% higher than where it is currently. So Macy's turned them down when the stock was much higher. The stocks come back in a, back down in a big way. You still have that private equity firm out there looking to, to buy the whole company. So um, we think that there's 50% upside or more. We think the company's really got to do some work here to get that stock back up or they're going to be acquired. Um, I would certainly vote for Macy's being acquired, being a shareholder now. So big catalysts coming in, a lot of the biotechnology, small cap biotechnology stocks that we own, we think it's going to be a very fruitful area as well over, the, say, the next six months. So our goal as we sit here with all these issues and the seasonality is to Take advantage of this pullback. Be loss averse. When, when the risks are high, just, just uh, be protective of your money and then buy low when the market pulls back and when, you, when we get some opportunities in a number of different names that we're looking at. So buy low, sell high. We don't have the philosophy of buy high and sell higher. That's not what we do. We buy low and we sell high. We want to be there reasonably early uh, when things start to move up or we find really compelling valuations in the overall markets. Thank you very much. Please hit like. If you want a hard copy of Market in a Minute, come to my website, Patrick Adams CFA, and we'll send that to you every week. Take care.